Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Divide and Conquer as we are continue with a faction overview. For today we have the Breland. So the Breland has been uh have has have a few changes um comparing to version 4.5 and we will uh walk through them as we do as always. So starting with the starting regions as the Breland, you start with four regions. You have Bree, and you have over here Hobbiton, Michaldelfin, and Longbotham. These three are Hobbit cities, uh, and you have Breland in here. The, the difference between the Hobbit cities and others are, um, n if I'm right, um, the Hobbit cities cannot be upgraded unless they have changed it in recent version. But I couldn't find anything about it. So the only city that can be upgraded of the dwarf of the Hobbit cities is Michel Delving. That one can grow to uh, large town, um, but the other two can't. That is to reflect um, the small living community of the Hobbits. So, four starting regions, three Hobbit regions, and a an, uh, normal Northman region, I think. No, you're middleman. Middleman. Yes, you're middleman. So, that is right away your culture. You have a middleman culture. With four regions, you have, well, kind of average start. There are a few factions that start with only one province, but you start with four of them. Then your starting army. It's not too big. It's compared to um, to your land. So you have Watchman Andy, a uh, Consmal Andy with uh, three units. Well, two units and then bodyguards. You have in Bree you have uh, Barlaman with a couple of Brela militia units, and in the Hobbit uh, villages you have a few. Uh, you have a general and one unit each. We have here another Hobbit general Ulf with also a Hobbit unit. So not too big and especially not really strong. The, uh, the Hobbits can be strong occasionally if used in the right way. But they're not that great. Then, continuing to your bodyguards. You have a few bodyguards. We have Watchman and uh, Consul Andy. With Consul Guard. This is your regular bodyguard. So, your faction air starts with a uh, regular bodyguard. You have Consul Master Barman, who starts with a unique bodyguard. He has Gatekeepers. A really good uh, crossbow uh, unit. And we have Bilbo Baggins, who I think uh, Brandabas Archers. No, Dwarven Travelers. This is new. This has changed uh, in comparison to version 4.5. So now you have Bilbo Baggins, who have some Dwarven Travelers. I think and uh, Paladin does have Brandabas Archers, yes. I think all you um, Hobbit Generals has Brandabas Archers. Here we have Will. Also Brandabas Archers. So the Hobbit Generals normally can't... Uh, all of them have uh, Brandabas Archers except for Bilbo. Which is to reflect his uh, connection with the Dwarves. Then here in the fort we have Brator the Ranger who has... A Dunedain bodyguard, if I'm right. Yes, Dunedain bodyguard. Very powerful uh, unit. Use them well. So, you have mostly some unique bodyguards. Um, but Consumon Andy does have your regular one. Then, continuing to family trees. As Bree, you don't have one. You are Teutonic. Um... It, it would really fit with Bree since there is no ruling family. You are actually the gathering of everything in Ariador that happens to be there. 
So you have a console that makes the decisions. Then ge uh, geographical area. Well, we are in area door and the majority of it, these lands are not really defensible. So uh, we have uh, the Barrowdowns over here. We will talk about that in a minute. Uh, north of you, you are kind of shielded by the Dunedain against uh, Angmar. But it's a very thin line. And uh, the Dunedain has a lot of enemies. So they will be really occupied with most of them. And they will have a hard time against Angmar. To the west, we have a few rebel regions, and then we have Eredluin and the High Elves. Towards the south there are quite a few rebel regions as well, right there for the taking. But, uh, if we follow the Guadalo River, we come up to Tarbet. So, not really that region, we have a few rivers here and there, that might be, uh, that might be able to protect you from... Uh, well, not really protect you, but might give you the opportunity to um, choose the battlefield. But there is not, there's not a real defensibility for your faction. Uh, as we, if we, if you click on a city and uh, go to town, we have the green books, which gives you um, the terrain type in a certain region. So the Shire is mostly grassland and then Emmenbereid which is not here. Under Thouwens, yes, Under Thouwens is mountainous if I'm right. If I read it right, yes, mountainous. So uh, there you can see which terrain, uh, which province have, which could be in your favor if you want, if you have certain units you want to use. Uh, the bonus is four. Although I think it's a really, really minor. Uh, those bonuses. Then going towards expansion. Well, as we see in the uh, in second turn auto expansion, we see that we are kind of uh, shielded from the north uh, by the Dunedain. So our conquest will probably go down south. There are a few rebel regions here called Willishar, Karas Nernele, Argond. Uh, we have Under Towers over here. We can go to the north, Osgallen, Barketha, Pat and Loon is mostly taken by the High Elves or um, Erd Luin. But if you are fast enough, you might be able to grab it. And further north, we have Barindonjunak. Uh, and then we already met Angmar. So there are a few rebel regions. I would advise you to go down south. Take Kor Wilshire, Kars Nernele, maybe Argand if you are fast enough. They are good settlements to have. And um, yeah, they are. And that that's what that would be my advice for expansion. Try to deal with the south first and then move up against Angmar in the north. Alright. Then, cut some battle maps. Um, there are a few dotted around here. Um, the Hobbit villages are kind of custom. Um, well, they are all equal to each other, so... Yeah, kind of custom. Mangalan is custom, uh, Bree is not custom if I'm right, Deadman's Dyke is custom, Anumanas is custom, uh, Ostul is custom, Tarbot is re uh, just a normal uh, Dunedine city. Then the first, the next custom settlements are Karndum, Litash and Mount Graham, uh, Imladris and Osnethil down south. So there are a few dotted around, but it's not too much. Especially since most of them are held by your allies. Talking about allies. Diplomacy. You start the game allied to uh, the good people of Eriador. 
the Northern Dunedain and the High Elves. So they are your um, allies and also kind of your protectors. So you have a really good relationship with uh, the Dunedain. We have uh, guide, uh, guarded you for a long, long time. Uh, and you build a friendship with them. Uh, also, you started at war with Dunland and Angmar. But do note, you don't border any of them. Uh, Angmar will be occupied with um, the Dunedain for most of the time. But eventually, most of the time, the Dunedain just collapse under the amount of enemies they having. But it normally will take them a while to do so. So you are uh, protected from Angmar in the early stages of the game. Uh, Dunland you don't border. You're used, uh, you used to quickly border them so, uh, because Matrith was rebel and you were most likely to take it. So then you would immediately border them at Tharbet. But that's not lo that's no longer the case. Dunedain gets Matrite uh, right away. Uh, so the first place you will bordering them is when you take Argond. I do advise you to take Argond. Argond is a city. Of, uh, it's a castle so it's pretty defendable. And uh, it will be a good addition to your defensive lines. So, uh, but do note you're not at war with Ennet White um, or anyone else in the area. So you have a certain amount of time to build up your army, build up your economy and uh, get in there. Then, going to buildings and culture. Well... I already said you are a middleman culture. You share this culture with, if I'm right, um, Dunland. Yes. And maybe Enid Wise. I can just spot it. Yes. So you, you share the culture with these two factions. Taking their cities will not have much effect on your um, public order. It do have some effect, don't get me wrong. You will always have a certain effect of cultural penalty. Uh, it's just not as heavy as uh, when you take a city from another culture. The second advantage of uh, taking um, cities with the same culture is you can start training your units right away. So uh, the timer will be reset and you can train way faster than when you first need to um, build up your culture. That are the two advantages of the same culture. Um, building wise, we are restricted. We are restricted to a city. To unlock our highest tier of towns, and uh, the large town is through the scripts. And I will go over that in a minute. Besides that, uh, we have... Uh, well, we do have the unique... Uh, we do have the opportunity to build the Bridge of Tharbeth and we will be able to restore restore the Crypts of Mangalan. And uh, the Downs is that. Restore the uh, Crypts, which will provide um, the training of Steel Bowmen. Besides that, we have, uh, with our ties of the Dunedain, we have the opportunity to Build the Dunedain camp and the Dunedain outpost, which gives us a few Dunedain units. Uh, I think this should be locked away behind the script. I guess the highest tier. There's the. It all connects with the script, so I will come. I uh, will go over that in a moment. The same with the barracks. Normally you are restricted to the blacksmith, the third tier of barracks. This Dunedain armorer is also part of uh, part of your scripts. Um, besides that, there is not much to talk about. You have one guild. 
the archery guild which gives um first tier only speed of speed up of replenishment second tier gives you watchman bow guard and the third tier gives you gatekeepers and watchman bow guard do note second tier is once for every faction so every faction will be it uh, can build it only once uh, if you want the second one of it you need to conquer it from another faction and the third tier is only being built once in the whole world so uh, it's not very likely you will get the third tier because the archer guild is i think shared with um i think the elves so they are more likely to get it the ai is anyway more likely to get it for some reason Uh, any other unique buildings? Yes, in Breland we have the Prancing Pony. They will provide you with your diplomat. So there is where you can train your diplomat. And they also give you a few other bonuses that would fit with an inn. Um, the next closest building you can train your diplomat is, I think, Venice Druinen maybe? For certain, Imladres, um, Kandum, uh, not Midlon, I think, but Thorns Halls. And if we go down south, we would need to take Alkfoot or Dunlarak, I think. I don't think it's Byrick, it, I think it's Dunlarak. So that is where you can train. Uh, any diplomats and uh, you don't have any other unique oh you do have a second guild which is the merchants guild first tier gives only in trade increased tradable goods the second tier gives you one merchant and for a second merchant you need the merchant guild headquarters which gives a, some really nice um uh, bonuses also the reduced cost of 30% is really nice. You also have a, uh, a unique line to uh, reflect your trading nature in the trade routes. Some buildings are really worth building. First tier, increased tradable goods, which will increase your income of a city. Small population growth and a flat, a flat income um growth which will only increase over uh will increase uh by every theme so really nice also one of your units will be trained um but that in a moment also already said you are restricted in towns but not in castles so you can build straight up uh, to the stronghold no restrictions there. Then I do want to. I will take a small note on your recruitment, because as Bree, you don't have a regular uh, barracks line. Your troops comes from economical buildings. So, for example, um, I think. I think the most uh, the first try is the land clerks uh farming income which provides you with the militia units so the breland militia and the archer militia if you build the roads we have the great roads in here you will get the greenway units and uh do i have anything else travelers rest don't give anything uh I thought, but let's just take the building browser. So for uh, the siege will come from its own unique building. So that is one of the few things you need to build as military buildings. But everything else is more economical focused and will provide you with units as well. So the woodland camp gives you woodland hunters and wood and lumbermen, and the blacksmith gives you nothing. Hmm. But the builders, the guild, how does give you journeymen? The poor give you 
no specific unit. The marketplace will give you merchant units. Um, Roads gives you greenway units. The fruit production gives you the militia. The chicken farming gives you farm and pikemen. And they are a little bit different from earlier versions. Because in version 5, you are the only faction that can train farm and pikemen. And they have become a little bit better. So they now use the regular pikemen animation. Which makes them a little bit stronger. And they are also overall been buffed a, a little bit. They probably still they are probably still the worst pikemen unit. But they are not as terrible as they were. And then we have the inn that's providing you only with a spy. And... Um, your town hall line gives you your watchman units. So really worth um, upgrading your town hall. Because now it not, not only gives you recruitment slot and free upkeep. But also your kind of best units uh, available. So really worth focusing on uh, your... Town hall. Now, like every faction, you get the militia garrison. Uh, these only spawn units when the city is attacked. On the first tier, you get two units with no upgrades. And the second tier gives you three units who has experience and upgrades on them. Oh, you have your unique Dunedain building. We already talked about that. And the herbalist doesn't give any units. And last, the bank doesn't give you anything either. But the trade routes did. They give you merchant infantry, which is a really nice strike unit. So most units does co do come from mil uh, economical buildings. So as you build up your economy, you're also building up your military, which is a really nice thing to have. Then, coming to our scripts. Bree has a very, very important script. They have um, the Dunedain Choice script. Which means, uh, in fact, that Bree has to make a decision. Will we, um, will we stay with the Dunedain and protect Middle-earth from all evil? Or will we choose isol isolation and don't bother with the world affairs if you choose to go with the dunedain route you will be able to build the highest tier of smith but you will be uh, locked out of your highest tier of cities so you choose um the skill the skills and craftsmanship of the dunedain it will unlock the highest tier of smith uh, you will have access to a f to a certain amount of Dunedain units, and um, you will you will be will be taken. Uh, you will deal with the world affairs. So um, it's m it's more of the uh, lore wise approach. If you choose, on the other hand, for isolation. You will be cut out of the Dunedain units. All Dunedain units you will have in your army will be disbanded. The general down south, Brator, will be killed off. But in return, you'll be able to upgrade your cities to the highest tier. And you will be able to, un uh, to train every mercenary in the game. So I think they will come from the prawns. No... Uh, they won't come from the Prancing Pony. They will come from the highest tier of... Enter not entertainment. We just had them. It was entertainment, I think. Where do we have it? Gathering Halls. Yes. So you will have the... Uh, you will be able to unlock the Merchant's Hall and... The Mercery Lodge will provide every um, Mercery 
listed in this uh, in this list. Also, you will be will have access to um, dwarven siege equipment. Don't think they will be listed. No, but you will have access to dwarven uh, siege equipment to really make it worth uh, to choose the uh, merchant route. So instead of the Dunedine uh, support, you will have more dwarven support, which is which really makes you think. To, uh, at least it would make me really th uh, think to choose the merchant route, because in earlier versions it was a no-brainer to just go with the Dunedine. In my opinion, the mercenaries were nice but not convincing. Uh, but now with the unlock of the High Steel City and uh, the addition of the Dwarven Siege Equipment and the amount of mercenaries you have, it's really worth it in my eyes. So that is also Bree's only script. There are no other scripts involved. Um, well, a small one. It's not really a script, it's a small thing. If you take Mangolin and you stay allied to the Dunedine, you will be able to train Dunedine Steel Bowmen in Mangolin once you have restored the Crips. So that's a really, really strong armor-piercing archer unit. So if you decide, if you already decided to stay with the Dunedine route, because I think once you choose the Merchant route, you will also be locked out of um, the Mangolin thing. So as long as you stay allied to the Dunedain, you restore the crypts, you will be able to train Dunedain Steel Bowmen. But in my opinion, it's always um, worth noting to try to first let it grow a little bit, although I think growth is negative at the moment in Mangolin. So it will. It's not an easy task to take Mangolin and restore the crypts because you first need to upgrade the town to uh, the village to a town before you can even use it. That is the Breland um, campaign map. I will see you in a moment on the battle map with uh, the and the Breland units. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the battle map of. Uh, the Breland, and in a, fur in a quick glaze you see that we are, in the beginning of the game, a pretty well-rounded faction. We do lack a few, uh, we do lack what ca some cavalry, but overall we are pretty alright. So, going with the lowest tier of troops, we have, well, a lot of choice. Let's start with the Breland Militia, regular spear uh, unit. A sp yeah, pretty trash spear unit actually. With a 2 attack, a 4 charge and a 5 defense. They are not something um, to be <laughs> to talk too much about. Um, I have poor morale, poor morale response. No movement speeds. They have a bonus against camels, walks and horses. That is because they are spears. So just a pretty poor unit. They are supported by. Well, let's get the farm and pikemen first. Um, the farm and pikemen with a two attack, a three charge, and a six defense. They are still probably the worst pike unit in the game. They do have long spear now, so they have a different animation than before, which should make them a little bit better. But don't expect too much about it. So they also changed visuals somewhat, but not too much. So the farmhand pikemen, man, average morale, average morale response, and a bonus against camels, walks, horses, and elephants. Then um, the lumberman, an early tier strike unit with a five attack, which is armor piercing, a seven charge, and a three defense. You see at 
spot you see right away why they are useful. Charge into the enemy on the, from the flanks, deal the damage and move out. They don't have the defenses to stay in combat, because they will die. They have poor morale response, uh, poor morale and they are slightly faster than other infantry. They are, f they are effective against armor and they are adaptive uh, at hiding in the woods. Then the last we have the store, the watch sheriffs, the first of your two uh, hobbit units, with a three attack, a one missile attack, a four charge, and then three defense. They they seemed somewhat on the weaker side, but where they really shine is their missile, which is armor piercing, and as you see, they have fifty of them, so. Um, they can really deal some damage. Even if it is one attack, it is armor piercing. And I have seen uh, generals fall against this unit. As long as you are able to to have them keep firing. Um, they have so they have poor morale, poor morale response. They are slightly far, uh, slightly slower than other units. They are hobbits after all. Um, they have 50 missiles with a 60 meter range and an average accuracy. Do not underestimate these guys. They have 177 of them with 50 missiles each. They will deal the damage if they have the opportunity uh, to do so. So use them well. They are supported by 3 units of archers. The most Widely available of them are the Archer Militia. Just like um, the Breland Militia, they come from the land, from the farm line. They have a two attack, a two missile attack, and two charge, and a three defense. So they are all right first tier archers, but don't get them in melee because they will die. They have poor morale, poor morale response. If 80 missiles, 150 meter range, and a low accuracy. A better option are the Woodland Hunters. They have a 2 missile attack, a, five mi uh, a 2 melee attack, a 5 missile attack, a 2 charge, and a 3 total defense. Making them in melee as worse as the Archer Militia. But they are way better archers. These guys will kill. They have poor morale, poor morale response. They have 24 meters, uh, 24 missiles, and 150 meter range. But where you see true quality is their accuracy, because these guys will hit what they are aiming for with a high accuracy. They are adept at hiding in the woods, and um, yeah, so get them firing because they will get the kills. The last unit in this early tier are the Brandobras, uh, Bandobras Archers. They have a 5 melee attack, a 3 missile attack, a 3 charge bonus and 9 total defense. Making them a better um, archer than your archer militia. Because overall they will deal more damage. Yes, they are way better archers than the archer militia. They have average morale, average morale response. They are slightly slower than other units. They have 28 missiles, 170 meter range, and an average accuracy. Arguably, these guys are your best archers. Early tier. Right, then we go to the kind of uh, second tier. The lines are a little bit blurry since they removed. Uh, the barracks event, especially for factions like Bree, who have um, whose units come from uh, economy buildings. But I think uh, if you wa look to watch damage dealing, we are kind of second tier with the Greenway Spearmen, a better version of the Breland Militia. So these guys have a five attack, a five th uh, charge, but a thirteen defense. Keeping them alive in melee. 
They have average morale, average morale spawns. They don't have any uh, movement bonuses. They have a bonus against camels, walks, horses and elephants. Making them a solid defensive unit. They are supported by the merchant militia. Who come from the um, market line. So they have a 4 attack, a 5 charge and a 15 defense. Making them a little bit more aggressive than uh, the green white spearmen. Uh, but do note, they don't have any defense skill, which is odd. Um, never seen the, I've never seen this this uh, this setup. No defense skill, but they do have armor and a shield. Interesting. Mm. They have poor morale, poor morale response, no movement bonuses. So in that regard, on morale, they should. Be more likely early tiers, but seeing their dam and their damage dealing and their defensive stats, they should be more up with the Greenway Spearman. Um, while the Greenway Spearman holds the line, these guys can charge from the sides and kill the enemies. Because spearmen tend not to really kill things. Then in support of these units, we have the journeyman. They these guys come from your uh, Carpenter's Huts. Um, they have a 2 melee attack, a 5 missile attack, a 4 charge and a 9 defense. The 5 missile attack making them arguably the worst crossbow unit in the game. But it is still a crossbow unit so they, ha they are armor piercing. They have poor morale, poor morale response, 26 missiles, 130 meter range, crossbows most of the time have less range. So there are no surprises in there. And an average accuracy. So we have three units who are more in between. They're not really your mainstream. You wouldn't want them as your mainstream units. But they are not as poor as your militia kind of unit. So they are really in between. And they are supported with two cavalry units. And we start with the Merchant Cavalry. With a 4 attack, a 5 charge and a 15 defense. These are, well, just mounted merchants. Merchant Militia. And if poor morale, poor morale response. They, do, they are skilled against mounts, so that is in their advantage. But besides that, they are not... They tend not to perform that greatly. They are best used uh, chasing down routing units um, yeah that is basically that purpose if you want to really deal some damage you can better choose the greenway riders with a 5 attack a 7 charge and a 12 defense they are on the defense part a little bit worse than the merchant uh, cavalry but these are a more dedicated charge cavalry their charge is better, their attack is better, they do have a secondary attack of 4, but the whole setup of uh, is that, there are more, that they are more of a charge cavalry. They have average morale, average morale spawns, and no other bonuses, just a decent cavalry unit. So then we are coming up to your mainstream infantry, the Watchman units. And we start with the Watchman Sword Guard. With a 9 attack, a 5 charge and a 14 defense, these guys are a real mainstream unit. They will hold the line, they will perform well, and uh, but don't, don't put them against any dwarves of, or elves because they will quickly lose. And even against the regular and uh, the mainstream units of Engmar, they will they will struggle. Um, most mostly also because Engmar have mainstream halberdiers, which are more of a defensive unit, who is also capable of racking up some kills. So um, these guys will uh, will struggle against most other factions other factions mainstream units but 
they will do the damage in, in the end. You have a good morale, average morale response, and just a no an all round sword and board unit. They are supported by the Watchman X Guard with a 6 attack, a 5 charge, and a 12 defense. They are slightly worse um, than the Swordsman, but they are armor piercing, so they do have a bonus against armored units. You have good morale, average morale spawns, and a bonus against elephants. But besides that, there's not that much that separates them from the sword guard. In this tier, we are also supported by another archer unit. The Watchman Bow Guard. With a 5 melee attack, a 4 missile attack, a 3 charge, and an 11 defense. They are... Alright archers. We see in uh, the tier below that the Woodland Hunters are better as uh, arch, de arch damage dealing. And um, the Brandabas archers are better all-rounders. So, they are the combination of both of them. Worse than each and worse, worse than the others. Uh, in a third below, uh, but not bad. They have a good morale, average morale response, 24 missiles, uh, 180 meter range. I think that is the best of all of them. So that is the only advantage of uh, the bow guard and a medium accuracy. But most of these units are do have a pretty fast replenishment, so you will be able to train a lot of them. Then we are going to your highest tier of units, starting with one of your more of a widely available unit, that is the Merchant Infantry. It comes from um, the Trade Route line, and it's a Strike Infantry. With a 7 charge, uh, 7 attack and 8 charge, which is armor piercing and a 20 defense. They are your elite troops. Um, they have average morale, average morale response. And they are just a good strike infantry. Don't keep them in melee because they will die in prolonged melee. But just charge them in, let them deal the damage, withdraw and do it again. And they will perform uh, very well in your armies. Then we have a unit. I could also put this one in the Dunedain overview. Which I will do with the other Dunedain units. Because as you see we don't... Um, we don't discuss uh, the Dunedain units in here. Because they, they will have a dedicated video with the Northern Dunedain. But the one I do want to uh, take care of now is the Tharbert Royal Guard. Another really good Pike units. They have a 6 attack, a 5 charge, and a 17 defense. And they are by far one of your best units available. They have a good morale, a good morale response, uh, and a bonus of fighting against camels, wargs, horses, and elephants. So if you choose for the Dunedain route, take Tarbot and build the rebuild the bridge, because these these guys are worth the money. And they re they re they look really cool actually. Most visuals of um breed haven't changed, but uh Tarbot has changed as part of the reunited kingdom, I guess. Alright, but there is one unit we need to uh address, and that is that are the gatekeepers. This is um, the bodyguard of Barlaman with a 6 melee, melee attack, an 8 missile attack, a 4 charge and a 16 defense. They are, your, they are a really good unit. Uh, it's also the unit that uses star, sharpened stakes. They are skilled against mounts, effective against armor. They have good morale, good morale response. Um, they have bone fighting against camels, walks, horses and elephants. 26 missiles, 140 meter range, and then high accuracy. So just a really, really decent uh, pikeman unit. Uh, crossbow unit. And once they are done, they are a halberdier unit. So I think they are also armor piercing with their halberds. 
Uh, I read I read in this change log they have been changed. They have changed uh, the animation of the gatekeepers because in earlier version they tend to you uh, they they tend to cause some crashes and they have uh, with another animation it would be solved. Well, I will first deal with a regular bodyguard before we go to a few of the mercenaries you will have available. So, your bodyguard is the console guard. An 8 attack, a 5 charge, and 21 defense, making them a good um, bodyguard unit. But what makes them a really good unit is that they are armor piercing. So, that will, that could make a difference um, in the battle, because most of the time you want as a player, you used your best units against the enemy's bodyguard. And now you have a counter to that. So, effective against armor, good morale, good morale response, no more bonuses in movement. Just an all round good unit. Then, let us take care of uh, some of the mercenaries, and I will need to start a battle for that, I think. So, we can really look at them. Right, as you might have noticed, we are not dealing with all the mercenaries. Just as with the Dunedain, uh, some mercenaries are also units from a faction. So, they will be dealt with within the faction. There are a few... Um, a few dwarven units that will be uh, f uh, addressed in the mercenary pool, um, and I will I will try to put some sc uh, some screenshots with all the units uh, you will be able to train, um, but I will not address them in this uh, in this um, army because. It are just too many. And most of them will have their dedicated videos for it. So starting with the Rovenian Hunters. With a 5 attack, a 9 missile attack, and 4 charge bonus, and a 7 defense. They seem alright. A very special uh, 9 missile attack. They have javelins. Yes, they have javelins. They are skilled against mounts. The javelins are not armor piercing. They have three javelins with a 55 meter range and an average accuracy. They have poor morale, an average morale response. So they are, well, on the same level as the Brila militia. Only slightly better, I would say. So not that great. And uh, they have a counterpart, which I think are over here. The Rovenian Spearmen with a 2 attack, a 4 charge and a 7 defense. They are worse than the Hunters. They don't have the Javelins. They are, they have a worse uh, stat I think. Yes, they are worse in, are worse attack. Um, only their defense is equal to that. So, if you have the opportunity and you have to choose between Spearmen or the Hunters, always go for the Hunters. They are just better. Um, the spearmen have a poor morale, average morale response, bonus fighting against horses, camels, and walks, but that is because they are spearmen. Alright, we will now deal with uh, some of the dwarves, the dwarven travelers. We might already discuss them in the Erebor video, but we'll just go over them again. With a 5 melee attack, a 3 missile attack, a 3 charge and a 10 defense, they are good archers. I In my playthrough with uh, Bree in version 4.5, I have to admit, and they were one, they were my better archers. I really liked the tra Dwarven Travelers. So, train them whenever you can, because they are, they are really worth their money. They have a very good morale. An average morale response, 24 missiles, 150 meter range, and an average accuracy. Then we let us deal with the other dwarves, the sons of the fallen. These are really 
really good unit. An 11 attack, a 5 charge, and a 32 defense, making them arguably one of the best mercenaries available in the game. They frighten in by enemies, they are skilled against mounts, and they have unwavering morale, which is locked, which means they will fight to the death. They have good morale response, they are slightly slow, that's because they are dwarves, and they have a bonus against camels, walks, horses, and elephants. Just a really, really good unit. Don't be afraid to use them. Then, uh, I think... Let's just go from left to right. The Far Room Mercenaries. These are, well, I think it's kind of double-handed X thing or something. Not really sure, actually. They really look nice. It, first, I thought it were some kind of halberd unit. It could be seen as a spear unit. I'm not really sure what it, uh, what it is, actually. But a really cool unit. The Far Room Mercenaries. With a 12 attack, a 7 charge, and a 16 defense. They are a really good unit to have in your army. They have good morale, good morale spawns. They are skilled against mounts. Just an all-round good unit. I think they are kind of a charge unit. But again, I'm not really sh sure what I would make of this of this sword. And that it's, it's attached on, an, on a spear or something. A really cool weapon, don't get me wrong. But I'm not really sure how to classify it. Some glaive, maybe? I don't know, but a really cool unit, nonetheless. Then, going to the Sarlin Mercenaries. They were already requested in uh, the Anadwaitian overview, because they are part of um, the Sarlin region, Saduri. But they they didn't fit in the uh, army of Anadwait, so I postponed their... Um, their introduction. They are an halberd unit with a four attack, a five charge, and an eight defense, making them a decent halberd unit. They are skilled against mounts, and they have they are effective against armor. They have average morale and patches morale response. They're slightly fast, but I think again that's something to do with the movement animation that they had that. Um, that the devs had to make them faster in order to make them move as fast as normal units because of the movement animation. Although they do carry shields on their backs, they don't have a shield skill. So don't, uh, don't be confused. They don't have any shields, making them a little bit more vulnerable to archer fire. Then last but not least, the Herondor Mercenaries. With a seven charge, a five, uh, a seven attack, a five charge, and a fifteen defense, they they already seem a good unit. But their armor piercing effect making them a really good unit. They have average morale, average morale response, um, no bonuses, just an all-round strike unit, and available to you um, once you chose the merchant route. Do note. All these units, there are always mercenaries, but once you chose the merchant route, you will be able to train them within Bree. Else you need to go to the region and have the luck that the mercenary pool is replenished and you can train them. But else you, they are available to you in Bree. Also available, the Privateer X-Men. And again, a good strike unit, 8 attack, 7 charge, 16 defense, armor piercing, um, good morale, impetuous morale response. Do I need to say more? In most of in most of my campaigns, when I meet the private X-Men, they are the units I am afraid of. Everything else in Rebel Cities is not as dangerous as the privateer X-Men. And they are very, very uh, common uh, in rebel regions. And we have... Well, let's start with the Rovanian Riders. Another strike unit. Not too great. 
but they will deal the damage. With a 2 attack, which is pathetic. A 5 charge and a 7 defense, they don't seem to be that great. But if you strictly use them as charge cavalry, so charge in, withdraw, charge in, withdraw, they will rack up the kills. Don't keep them in prolonged melee because they will die before you are uh, noticed. They have average morale, average morale spawns, they are slightly faster than other cavalry. They do have a secondary attack, so if they stay in melee, they have a secondary attack of 5, which is way higher than the primary attack. Interesting enough. Um, so, just another uh, cavalry unit. Um, more likely to be used as uh, charge cavalry than for prolonged melee. Who will be more useful in prolonged melee are the privateer cavalry. With an 8 attack, a 7 charge and a 15 defense, they are just mounted privateer X-Men. They do lose the armor piercing trait, um, which is unfortunate. But it is what it is. There are not many armor piercing cavalry anyway. And they have good morale, impetuous morale spawns, and just good melee cavalry. I have not much else to say about it. So, if I've done things right, you will have you will see uh, the units that you will be able to train in um, Asbury once you've chosen either the Dunedain route or the Merchant route. So I will try to make a nice visual for it for you once uh, for things uh, for the units you can train one. You have the merchant route and the units you can train when you chose the Dunodyne route. There might be units in that are restricted. For example the Tarbot Royal Guard but also uh, the Minas Ital Guardians. And there might be a few others for the Dunodyne route. But the merchant route will be trainable in Bree. I hope I have given you a nice overview of Bree. If so, please leave a like. If you want to see things different, do comment. Because I really I want to try to improve the overviews. And I only can when I know what I do wrong. Um, but for now, let us find out who will we, who will we be dealing with next week. I will unpause the video. I will hand my... Um, Army towards the AI. Move up quickly. And see how we will be shredded to pieces by the enemy. Because we are facing a quite strong enemy. Alright, we have... See some brown overall. I see some armored cavalry. Mostly brown. Majorities. Yeah, just the majority is brown. We have a few catapults in between. But every time when you uh, let the AI choose an army, they will have catapults because they are, they are seen as a very strong unit. Uh, this is our army, I guess. Yes. This is really the brown. And we are dealing with the Anduin Veil. So it's the faction uh, that I am playing at the moment. So if you enjoy that, please. Um, take, a look at, uh, take, a take a look at my campaign. Things are not going that great, but... They're not going worse. They're not going really bad either. We have our mid-tier Bjorning sh uh, shield, shield bearers. We have more Bjornings. Most of the units I don't have. I haven't played with. So they are uh, that's something I need. Um, that I really would like to see in my own game. But... I don't have them yet. They're really impressive bear warriors, for example. Uh, 
Uh, we have the Brandon Buzz Archers fighting the Bear Warriors, the Skin Changers, and the Bjorning Defenders. Well, they're not going to survive that. That's quite certain. We have the Aeotheads. And uh, just like Ant White, the Anwin Villa has had a complete overhaul, which will make which will be really interesting to see. Hmm, we're not doing that great. The Greenwood Foresters, really nice unit. I'm not doing that great, actually. Although the Ravenian Spearmen aren't, uh, haven't broken yet. Which is actually quite surprising. The Aotheat Cavalry. Alright, that will that it will be for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If so, please leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe to the channel. And I hope to see you soon in another video of Divide and Conquer. But until then, goodbye.